In America, the term station wagon has always carried with it a bad stigma. However, other markets have proven that if you want SUV versatility with car-like driving dynamics, a station wagon is really your best bet. And for 2017, there's an all new entry into this segment. Meet the 2017 Golf Alltrack, essentially a golf sport wagon with about an inch more ground clearance, standard four motion all wheel drive, and of course the requisite gray cladding to give this a tougher look. However, will this be enough to sway buyers looking at a compact SUV? That's what we're here to find out. Looking at the exterior, the Golf Alltrack really doesn't look too much different from the standard Golf. Now, as you guys know, the Golf family of vehicles is pretty uh, wide range here in America. This is essentially the SUV version of uh, the Golf Sport Wagon because Volkswagen has said gave it a little over an inch of ground clearance. Now you can see the front end has a very traditional VW look. It's actually, to me, is a little bit boring. Uh, Volkswagen is actually updating the Golf lineup entirely for 2018. However, the 17 Sport uh, All Track is going to carry on with the same front end. Now, my tester is actually a mid trim. This is an SE, so it comes standard with halogen headlights. No LED daytime running lights. Um, if you want uh, an HID option or with an LED running light, you have to go for the top line SEL premium and then add a lighting package. As it looks from here, I'm not terribly in love with the way it looks. It's a little bit cheap looking to me, but again, if you guys don't care about having that option, um, you're gonna be okay with this look. Other changes I'm noticing, you have an all track badge in the grill. There's a nice honeycomb grill finish. You have some silver trim along with that gray cladding, as I mentioned earlier, to give this more of a rugged, uh, tougher look. Although, it, to me, it still kind of sits basically as high as the standard golf family. Now, my tester is in the shade of tornado red. It's a nice exterior color. It's kind of a flat red though. There's no actual um, sparkles in the paint, which I would have preferred. Now, looking around the sides, you can see here more of that gray cladding. There's an all track badge. And then my tester has the standard wheels. These are a 17 inch wheel option. If you guys go for the SEL, you'll have an 18 inch wheel. These 205 tires are pretty narrow, honestly, if you're gonna consider this to be an SUV, that's what makes it again, a little more car-like. You can see the increase in ride height here. This has around 7 points or 6.7 inches of ground clearance as opposed to like five and a half as a standard version. If you guys are keeping track, a Subaru Outback has a roughly two inches more ground clearance than this model. Um, all tracks are also gonna be differentiated with the silver painted mirrors. Unfortunately, there's no blind spot monitoring or cross traffic alert available, which is weird because you can actually get that on the sport wagon. Um, all tracks will also have these nice roof rails. My sister has the uh, panoramic sunroof that is standard on the SE trims and up. Uh, which is definitely a nice feature. It extends basically the entire roof panel. Now coming out the rear of the all track, you can see it has a very traditional wagon look, which is what I particularly like. You have the standard VW taillights, which aren't LEDs. Um, the refreshed Golf for 2018 will have LED taillights. These to me are a little bit, you know, clean, conservative. It's a very, very conservative hand, um, design, very typical Volkswagen. Um, looking around here down at the bumper, you have more of that cladding. You have some silver trim and then you have dual exhaust tips which do give this a little bit of a sportier look but i mean overall i really prefer the way the golf looks uh, if you guys go for the higher trims with the led running lights and the bigger wheels as this one sits as an se it's a little bit plain looking on the outside to me but if that's what you want you may actually like it now first approaching your uh, golf all track you can see here's the current key fob for the golf family it is a slightly different key that i showed you uh, in the new atlas and tiguan feels slightly more sturdy uh, I like that it still has the switchblade key, even though it has this, uh, my tester does have the company's smart key access system with push button start. Uh, to lock the vehicle, just have the key on you. Rest your finger on that little ridge portion there to unlock it, it has a sensor on the back of the handle. Just touch the back of the handle, it'll unlock the door for you. Now looking at the inside of the Golf All Track, you can see if you've been inside a recent Volkswagen Golf, uh, this interior is pretty much identical. Uh, there aren't really any changes, honestly. And, uh, and to be honest, I also don't really notice the increased ride height. Uh, it still kind of has the traditional step-in height of a car. My tester has the synthetic VTEX leatherette seats. Uh, these aren't real leather, but they do a pretty good impression. Uh, the seats themselves are only um, like half power or really the only the seat, the seat back is power. Everything else is a manual adjustment. It's a six way. But stepping inside, you can see you have the step in height of a car. So those of you who are looking for an SUV step in height, you may want to look at an SUV or consider Subaru's Outback that has a little bit more ground clearance than this. But when you shut the door, it sounds nice and solid. This is the current Mark 7 Golf platform, which is honestly a really great vehicle. Now to start the vehicle up, all you have to do is keep the key inside, um, put your foot on the brake, and then push this button down here to fire up the engine. 
And of course, what you're hearing is the uh, 1.8 liter turbocharged four cylinder. This is the only motor available in the all track. It's a really good engine. Um, VW does really great turbo engines and the Alltrack is no exception with its 1.8. Now you can see, looking at the rest of the interior, it follows the very conservative approach as the exterior. And to be honest, it's still clean, um, cleanly designed, but the tech is really behind. I think VW is looking to um, upgrade the interior for 2018. But nevertheless, compared to that Mark VI Jetta, the materials in here are better. You have a soft touch on the dash, uh, on this upper portion here, it's all soft touch. Uh, you have this carbon fiber imitation looks uh, plastic trim, which also looks good. Uh, the door panels are also soft touch. You have an aluminum door handle, uh, more, you know, leatherette padding down here where your elbows are going to rest. The windows are one touch for all four. Um, really nice feature to have, especially in this segment. Um, and looking at the steering wheel, this is the same steering wheel on the Golf family. It has some nice piano black trim. It's got a flat bottom. It's got paddle shifters behind the wheel. This is an electric power steering assist. It's actually a really good steering in this car. We'll go into the test drive later, later on. Now looking at the center stack here, you can see um, it's got the, you know, six and a half inch uh, Volkswagen CarNet infotainment system. It also has Android Auto and CarPlay, so that is uh, included on this car, so that's definitely good. My tester is missing the nav function. Uh, you'd have a nav button right there if you had it. You can see it's got a proximity sensor, so when you are not, when your hands aren't away from the screen, it goes, some icons go away, bring your hand closer, they come back up, which is nice. The touch response is good, um, but you guys saw in the newer Atlas and uh, Tiguan, they've got a new all glass eight inch display, uh, which just looks a lot nicer. Combine that with the digital cockpit display, which my tester doesn't have. The new Golf, the, the 18 Golf will offer that, and it basically brings the Golf's tech features up to the standards that the rest of the class has, has uh, in, brought in. Um, looking, uh, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you get a backup camera, of course, um, that is standard equipment. There's no parking sensors, although that is available. Uh, the backup camera itself hides behind the Volkswagen emblem, so it stays clean. It doesn't have trajectory, it just has some distance markers, so it's a pretty, um, rudimentary backup camera, just the standard stuff. Um, down here you have your single zone manual climate control. You have to go to the SEL trim if you want to get the dual zone function. Um, you have a little bit more storage uh, down here uh, with another USB port, an aux port down there. Uh, this controls your six speed dual clutch transmission. That's the main difference between this and a Golf Sport Wagon with the automatic. Uh, the Sport Wagon just has a traditional automatic, whereas this is the dual clutch. Come back here to sport mode. It also has a manual mode here on the shifter. It's a pretty traditional shifter which feels nice. There's lots of unused buttons here but this button right here controls your drive mode selector. When you push that you can go between four different modes. There's an off-road mode, there's a normal, a sport mode. Custom allows you to change the steering and the throttle response or there's also a silly off-road mode which I wouldn't, I doubt owners will honestly be taking this thing off-road. Uh, but it's really cool I guess that VW offers that you know if you guys you know want to do it for um, just gimmicky reasons. Now looking down here you can see there's a traditional handbrake um, some of the other Golf vehicles have um, electronic parking brakes, so I'm surprised if VW used a traditional handbrake here. Cup holders there, there's a coin holder there, those are like for some credit cards. Um, over here your armrest, it slides forward and adjusts, it has some storage in there uh, with a 12 volt power outlet which is nice. Uh, my tester being an SE trim also has the large panoramic sunroof that is standard uh, on this trim and up which is really nice. You can see it has a nice little power retractable sunshade if you guys uh, don't want to deal with too much of the sun beating down on you. Now. Uh, the seats, they're pretty comfortable, supportive. I really wish that they had uh, full power adjustment though. Uh, you have to go to the full, the upper SEL trim to get that feature. But I mean, overall the interior of this car, while it is nice, uh, VW's interiors just haven't really felt class leading anymore. This is pretty much now class competitive. Uh, Mazda has done a better job with their interior quality. And honestly, if you guys don't wait for the 18, the tech in this vehicle, I mean, it includes Android Auto and CarPlay, but it doesn't have blind spot monitoring or a cross traffic alert. That's not available on the all track, although it is available on the sport wagon. Uh, and then uh, if you want like the driver assistance stuff, you have to option it in as like a $900 option where some competitors uh, make it a standard. The back seat of the Alltrack is also a little bit more cramped when you look at some of its uh, SUV or you know Subaru Outback competition. The Golf basically reminds you that this is a compact car. When you look at the rear seat dimensions, you can see the rear seat or the front seat on that side is pretty much pushed almost all the way back. There's there's no legroom for the rear seat passengers. But getting back here, you can see. Um, for somebody like me, I'm pretty short, so I have a decent amount of room. Shutting the door, it sounds nice and solid just like the front. like the fact that VW also gave you some rear seat vents back here. There's a pretty large uh, tunnel here, a hump that kind of intrudes on some foot space, but um, the materials back here are 
hard touch plastic, unfortunately, but it is still nicer materials than, than what uh, I showed you guys in the current Mark VI Jetta. Uh, VW does give you some, you know, dual map pockets here, which is nice, and then there's a nice little armrest on here that folds down with some cup holders and the seats, they fold down 60-40, and uh, they also give you this little pass-through here in case you actually don't want to fold down the entire seat. Now, our power tailgate is not available on the all track. That's one of the negatives with this vehicle as opposed to getting an SUV. But you can see you don't really give up much in terms of cargo capacity. Um, Volkswagen gives you around 30.8 cubic feet of space with all the seats up. If you want to fold down the rear seat, which you can pretty much easily do just by pulling this lever, um, it'll push that, push that forward, it'll unlock it. Um, you get around 66 cubic feet of space, which is definitely right up there you know, with uh, all, the, all the other compact SUVs, although it's actually a little bit more space than what I showed you guys in the uh, new Mazda CX-5. But looking underneath the floor here, you can see there's a temporary spare tire, um, so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So I'm pretty familiar with how the current Mark 7 Golf drives. I hadn't actually gotten a chance to drive the all-track, so you know, with a little bit more ground clearance, the standard four-motion all-wheel drive, this vehicle is a little bit heavier, about 300 pounds heavier than a sport wagon, but let's get out on the road and see how it all performs out there. Okay, interesting, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the design of this car is pretty boring to look at, I'll be completely blunt, but surprisingly, when you can come back, when you can get past the vanilla looks, this is one fun driving wagon for sure. The dual clutch in this car makes a huge difference versus the six-speed automatic you find in the other golf trims with this engine. <laughs> And it just, it pulls really well, surprisingly, for just a 1.8. And the shifts, because it's dual clutch, are just lightning quick. I love the way uh, this thing sounds when it shifts. It just, it makes it feel a lot faster uh, than its numbers would suggest. I mean, it only has 170 horsepower, but to be honest, it's really underrated. This feels to me like it has 200 horsepower. And, you know, it does weigh more than a standard Golf, about, you know, 400 pounds more than just a, a regular Golf you know, hatchback. But I don't really feel the weight too much. It actually feels really playful and very car-like. I mean, I don't even notice the extra one inch of uh, ground clearance compared to the standard version. Now, when you get it all going, the Golf All Track will sprint to 60 in around 7.5 seconds. Now, that is definitely not super quick, um, especially considering that the standard Golf will do it in like under seven seconds. But with the dual clutch, it's just a really snappy feeling car, especially when you start driving everything else in this segment. I mean, uh, RAV4 is slow, Rogue is slow, a CX-5 is slower than this. Really only the turbo CRV is what can uh, you know keep up with this thing or be just as fast. Or if you guys wanna go for you know Subaru Forester XT, those are a lot quicker with the, the turbo engine. Now, when you compare this thing to an Outback, the uh, sport wagon definitely is faster than the four-cylinder CVT combination. Uh, that combo just you know produces zero to sixty times in ten seconds. You have to go to the six-cylinder Outback, which makes the, that a lot more expensive than the Golf. Now, um, when you're not really talking about too much about speed, how does this thing drive on a normal basis? Now, I'm going to put the drive mode here into my custom setting, which I set it as the steering to be you know sportier, the transmission to be just kind of in a relaxed mode. And this is a really nice driving uh, wagon for sure. I mean, the steering is electric it's super quick it's super heavy and direct you actually have really good feedback especially considering you know what else everything else you drive in this segment just is so numb uh, the ride quality is also nice it's uh, comfortable it's compliant it's very quiet in here as well uh, there isn't too much road noise the engine is pretty hushed um, but really you know the visibility in here is also great i mean it's got it's got a very conservative design which translates to great forward sight lines you know big side mirrors so even though this car is lacking blind spot monitoring with the rear cross traffic alert um, you don't really need it because it, you can see out of this car but i mean again most most competitors offer that as an option so it's a little frustrating that vw doesn't offer that now my tester doesn't have any driver assistance so i don't have the adaptive cruise control with automatic braking uh, you, when you get that driver assistance package you also get you know park pilot where this vehicle will park itself for you i mean 
It's a small wagon and it feels like that when you're driving it. It feels a lot smaller than the last Outback I drove. Uh, and really, it's just a pleasant driving, you know, vehicle that's practical that's standard all-wheel drive so it doesn't it doesn't have any drama it just has all this grip uh, and you're really going to be impressed um, when you drive the all-track if you can get past its very mundane styling uh, and honestly slightly dated tech interfaces this is a seriously fun to drive wagon that'll be a great daily i would love to try this with the six with the manual transmission my tester i mean it has the dual clutch is a great transmission but uh, you know for those of you looking for like a niche vehicle that's the anti-suv uh, the all-track with the stick is definitely something that should be high up on your list. Now, fuel economy, you guys, in case you're wondering, uh, I mentioned earlier it was rated at 2230, and I've actually been averaging around 25 miles per gallon in mixed driving. Uh, on the highway, I got it up to around 31, 32 miles per gallon if I was really, you know, just babying the car, which is pretty much on par with all the SUVs, the compact SUVs in this segment. So you're not really going to buy this for the fuel economy advantage. I think Volkswagen needs to work on the gas mileage when they refresh this car. It should be getting closer to 35. Really, the new CRV that I tested, um, Scott slightly better MPG uh, than this wagon. Earlier in the video, I mentioned the Golf's very vanilla look. Now, I, as you guys saw in the test drive, you can get past the very safe styling. The Golf is actually one brilliant driving vehicle. Um, it has all the sporty dynamics that we come to expect from the Golf family, uh, but when paired with the dual clutch transmission, it actually makes this for one fun to drive vehicle. It literally drives more like a car as opposed to an SUV. And if that's something you're looking for, you're gonna really love that. Now, what is it gonna cost to get your hands on a Golf Alltrack? Now, compared to the Sport Wagon, the Alltrack is roughly about $2,000 more expensive uh, than a sport wagon with four motion all wheel drive, starting at around 25,800, around 27 with destination. Now that makes it roughly about the same price as what you're going to find uh, Subaru Outback with the four cylinder, a little bit more expensive than the Subaru Crosstrek, which again I think are these two are those two cars main competitors. Now my tester being the Midtrim SE comes standard with the Pano sunroof, has the push button start, the Fender audio system, the upgraded hand unit um, with the Android Auto and CarPlay. This one's going to sticker for around 31,000. $500, which to me is a pretty good chunk of change considering how bland this looks on the outside, you know, design wise. Now, if you guys want to go make this look a little bit nicer with the LED running lights, the bigger wheels and tires on the SEL, that's going to run you about $35,000 with the lighting package and the driver assistance, which makes this pretty expensive. A uh, fully loaded, a well equipped Outback is going to be roughly around the $35,000 mark. Of course, if you guys go for the six cylinder, that's going to be pushing 40 grand. So, again, um, the Golf does have its place value wise, but I also think that VW should have spiced up the way this looks, include a little bit more safety tech in it, like driver assistance as standard equipment on the higher trims. You shouldn't have to pay extra for it if you're gonna be spending you know, over 30 grand like this. But uh, with all that said, I really enjoyed my week with the Golf Alltrack. I think it's a fun to drive, sporty wagon, very practical, um, you know, nice interior aside from the dated tech. And I think a lot of people who want something other than an SUV are gonna find a lot to like with this vehicle. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2017 Golf Alltrack. Uh, if you're looking to see the latest cars, I'm testing Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.